manifestation of God's glory, part one. The word manifestation simply has to do with public demonstration. Something that makes the presence or existence of something else. In this case, it is to manifest the existence of God we are talking about. That God is not just a vague God, he exists. As a manifestation means something that makes the presence or existence of something else. You are telling the world that God is alive, he exists. Now hear this and hear me well. I'll be taking my message, dissecting two scriptures and then we go from there. In the book of Haggai chapter 2, I'll take those two scriptures and then we'll go further. And verse 9, it said, The glory of this later house shall be greater than the former, said the Lord of hosts. And this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. Take note of that word. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 7 and 8, But if the ministration of the dead, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, take note, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Moses came down and made people know that God exists. They could not behold his face. They could not look at Moses' face. He manifested God's glory to a point they could not look at his face. In the Old Testament. Take note of where I'm going. He said, well, Behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Which glory was to be done away? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? If they could not look at Moses' face, God is saying, in this dispensation, we should have greater results. Yeah, you get what God is saying here. And I pray today you will have better understanding and manifest His glory. Amen. That amen is too weak. Amen. But hear me and hear me well. How come Moses? manifested the glory of God, the children of Israel did not manifest. That's where I'm going. The Bible declared in Psalm 103 verse 7, it said, he made known his ways unto Moses, his ass on the children of Israel. The children of Israel were celebrating the manifestations, but Moses experienced it. And as children of God, the Bible said, the entire world, in Romans 8, verse 19, for the endless expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are not waiting for our explanation. They are waiting for our manifestation. The world wants to see you tell them that God exists. They don't want to tell them God is there. They said, let me see it really in your life because you're a child of God. And I know this day something will happen in your life. Yeah. They don't want to tell them God exists. They say they want to see it in your own life. And it says, men has received him, to them gave him power to become sons. So, okay, it's, it's for the pastors. No, it's talking about everyone that is born again. We are the sons of God. We are not the only ones he's talking about. He's saying everyone that is born again should manifest the glory of God. And from today, you will know what to do. Amen. Lift your voice and say, Lord, Lord tell, me what I tell me what I should do. And I will do it. Absolutely. What is the glory of God? The Hallman Illustrated Bible Dictionary defines glory of God as the weighty importance and shining majesty that accompanies God's presence. As said H-O-L-M-A-N, illustrated Bible dictionary, defines glory of God as the weighty importance and shining majesty that accompanies God's presence. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia in Hebrew, describes God's glory as the form in which Jehovah Yahweh reveals himself or is the sign 
and manifestation of his presence. That's what it means. Now hear this and hear me, people of God. Seek to have a personal revelation of his presence. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Of his glory. Don't just get excited that things are happening. Be more interested that you two carry the same glory. Are you getting me, sir? Many have seen God's glory manifest in our midst, in the body of Christ, but they don't know how to provoke it. They've seen God manifest. They can tell you if you come to our church, oh, you see the blind see. If you come around, you see God demonstrate his power. If you see come around, you see his glory. But they don't know what to do. But I said the whole world, all creature, is waiting for you and I to manifest. Tell them about the world is waiting for you. Say it one more time. He said the whole world is waiting. All creature is waiting for you and I. To prove to them that the God we are talking about exists. Are you hearing me, sir? What 50 sermons can't do, one proof of his presence will do it to a sinner. In Acts chapter 17, verse 6, something happened. Certain people in Thessalonica in Paul's days <laughs> said, Paul and Silas have turned the world upside down. That was the exact language they used. They said, these men have turned the world. They saw the manifesto. They said, these people have turned the world upside down. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain bread and other rulers of the city crying, this that have turned the world upside down. They have proved that God is real. So here. May that be your testimony, young people. Yeah. Now, but hear this and hear me well. There's so much complacency these days about the glory of God. Many just sit in church and wait to see the move of the Spirit. We all must get a personal revelation of what God wants us to do. He didn't say the world is waiting for the manifestation of pastors. Did he say so? He said, for you and I. So if you don't manifest your disappointment. The Bible did not say the world is waiting for the manifestation of evangelists. He said the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Are you a child of God? Then we'll tell your neighbor, why are you not manifesting? <laughs> Glory to God. That's where I'm going. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm going to give you from the Old Testament and bring it to reality of life. In the book of Haggai, turn with me to the book of Haggai, chapter 1. An illustrative picture of what you should do. In verse 2, Haggai 1, 2, and I'll read to 4. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Universe 3, so that we know that we are all together. Want to go? Is it time for you, O ye, that to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? In this passage, Israel had returned from captivity in Babylon and they returned after 16 years of their return. In verse 4, it says, Is it time for you, O that dwell in sealed houses and my house? They have returned after 16 what? years, they refuse to build the house of God. And God said, what are you talking about? You came out of Babylon 16 years after. You've done nothing about my house. <laughs> they were busy with their own houses. Now, take it to the New Testament. God is saying to you and I, we are the temple of the living God. Is that true? <laughs> God is saying, I'm not against you having fine houses. I'm not against you living fine. But it's more important that you build my house. Put my kingdom first. Until you put him first, you will never see his glory. You must understand how God works. He said, why? <laughs> the reason you have not seen my glory is because 
You are busy building your houses and you have not built my house. No man can manifest God's glory who does not put God first. So here. We must have a change of orientation to understand how it works. The emphasis on material things is more than the kingdom is the biggest challenge of today. God wants you and I to count everything else as worthless in comparison to his will and purpose for our lives. Tell your neighbor you must put first things first. If you want his glory. Now listen carefully. Look at what God said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 to 33. He made a statement. He said, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with, where with us shall we be what? Clothed. For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Shout hallelujah. In Haggai, where we are taking the message from chapter 1 verse 6, he said, you have sown much and bring a little. God is speaking to Israel. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe, you clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, earned wages to put it into a bag with us. They were after their well-being than putting the building of his house first. Now, what is the lesson you, you learned from the Haggai days? Israel focused on themselves and material things first. In the process, they put off the rebuilding of the house of God. Today, that is what is happening to many in the body of Christ. Too many are involved in their personal lives. Their personal things are the things of God. So, no way to manifest the glory of God. So, I hear. Spiritual things are no longer a priority. Everyone think of self. You know, Paul speaking in Philippians 2.21, hear what he said. Philippians 2.21, Paul made a statement. He said, for us seek their own. Not the things which are Jesus Christ. Hey, Father, I need an appointment. Father, I need house. Father, I need car. Father, I need because the boy, the more you are calling me, Father, I need them, the things are going further. They are not coming close. And there are people who don't ask, yet it comes. May you get to that company that you will not ask, yet God will give to you. Amen. That amen should be stronger. Amen. Tell yourself, I have to re-examine myself. Amen. Say it one more time. Everyone thinks of self. In the same book of Haggai chapter 1 verse 5, now hear what the Bible says here. It says, Now therefore, thus say the Lord, consider your ways. That means, change your style if you want my glory to come down. Reexamine yourself and know that you have missed it somewhere. That this doesn't work like that. Are you getting what God is saying? So I tell you how to manifest his glory. How to do what? How do we start it? How do we start? Where does it start from? How to manifest his Where does it start from? <laughs> there are people who manifest his glory. I manifest his glory without humility, without struggles. Don't think you, you can fast. If you don't lay this foundation, you will still not get things fast. How do I manifest his what? Glory. Where do I start from? Number one. Change of attitude. Change of what? Attitude. Change of attitude. We have to change in our hearts. Based on Haggai chapter 1 verse 5, it says consider your ways. Consider what? Your ways. That means change your pattern. Change your style. Change your approach. It doesn't work that way. In Matthew chapter 6, where we read, verse 25, then if you read 31 to 33, he said, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, 
What you shall put on? It's not the life more than meat and the body more than amen. God, yeah, oh God, give me hands. Don't. I mean, he's saying God is not the God cares for you and I more than you care for yourself. And he's saying don't take the thought for those things. I said God does not love you. He said don't think about the house you build. Don't think about the cars you drive. And that's what you bother yourself about. God said no, no, no. This is not my pattern. This is not my. That's not my pattern. But seek me first. I know you need them, but put me first and see if I will not give them to you. Shout hallelujah. Now, hear this and hear me well, my, my brothers and sisters. God speaking in Proverbs 23, verse 26, he made a statement. He said, my son, <laughs> give me thy heart, not your money first. Give me your heart. And you will. <laughs> and let the eyes observe my ways. Give me your heart. You know why? Anywhere your heart is, that's where everything about your life will go. It's not give me your money first. Give me your heart. Because if a man's heart is in the kingdom of God, he will not find it difficult to give his time, resources, and everything. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. That's where it starts from. <laughs> the heart of the matter is a matter of you can't manifest his glory if you don't change your style. All these prayer points, oh God, I need this, I need this. It makes you a needy. Manifest his glory first, put him first. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Then number two, in Haggai chapter 1 verse 8, this is my guy. Look at, let's read together, one to go verse 8. It said, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I'll be glorified saith the Lord. He said go. He's not talking about the fiscal building now in the New Testament. He said go. Now come and build my kingdom. Build my what? Then I'll be interested in you and then you see that the glory I'll give you will be greater than anyone that you have ever had. What is his kingdom? How can you build his kingdom without so winning? So number two, so winning. Number two is what? You can't build this kingdom without winning souls because if there are no souls, there's no kingdom of God. So I hear. The moment there are no souls, there will be no kingdom of God. He said, my friend, he wants to see my glory. Go and win souls and I will manifest my glory in your life. So I hear. So winning is what gives God pleasure. It's what gives God what? And you can't give God what pleasures him, permit me, and not enjoy his treasures on earth. <laughs> you can't give what, what? What pleasures him, permit me, as I put it, and not enjoy what? His treasures on the earth. If you glad in his heart. <laughs> he said, look, my joy is that come and bring wood and build my house. So go and bring souls and increase my kingdom and watch if I will not beautify your life with glory. So I hear. Are you hearing what God is saying? There are people who don't ask God for things. Things look for them. Get 